In one of the previous contemplations, one titled Alchemy, I tried to describe the realization of the analogy between the application of the magnum opus process and stages and its counterparts in our minds when faced with new events or information. And although the process to reach that metaphorical philosopher's stone is, in my contemplation, still a profoundly individual one, in a conversation with John, who I consider among my brothers, a metaphor similar to an alchemical process came to me, moonshine distilling more likely, as a means to attempt to describe what the individual at first and then consequent collective process around us may be. He requested that I wrote it, wrote it down and recorded it, to which I initially said no, as I thought I was no bootlegger, and the whole description would be considered nothing more than potato distilling logic, might even unintendedly promote booze as a supposed spiritual process when all I made was a metaphor, and this all could be even more confusing than the rest of the channel is considered already. Also, people are already fed up with metaphors this, metaphors that. I thought it was settled. No, I said. Then, however, he sent a picture of Tess, his dog, also known as the Sun Bear, nicknamed so after Keith Jarrett's outstanding concertos in Japan, and the fact also that her, that her face does resemble a cuddly beautiful bear. And in that picture, Tess was squinting judgingly, in the same manner a kung fu master stares down a pupil who failed that simple and basic levitation exercise. Given that Boo, my own pooch, immediately agreed with Tess by dangling her ears in disapproval of my refusal, I had no choice but to get to it. So, here goes. I call this the recipe for our moonshine. Just kidding. Imagine first that the material realm, where time exists, is a world self-powered alembic device. By world, I mean that it can perform all other preceding tasks, such as preparation and fermentation, as well as the distilling itself. And by self-powered, I mean that all of its processes comes from the fuel contents sitting inside, from flammable essences trapped within, even if unmanifested as a merely potential alcohol. Alcohol is also known as spirit, interestingly. I ask you to bear in mind that only inside the alembic device does time exist. This is very important because then the understanding of potential alcohol or spirit manifesting is merely a matter of time and process inside the alembic. But spirit is a self-evident truth outside of it. And yet, the fact that time exists only in the alembic device does not mean that all the processes to make the spirit trapped within manifest and leave are sequential. Imagine then, if you will, that time in the device is a multi-layered factor and that all the phases of the produ production of this our moonshine <laughs> can happen simultaneously at different levels within one's individual and collective universes. So, this said now, inside this, this alembic we have uh, potatoes, because this is a very traditional metaphorical distilling recipe. So in this metaphor, potatoes symbolize matter. In that sense, imagine all matter and all material creatures are made of potatoes. Some of you would prefer to imagine gingerbread creatures, I'm sure, but you can't, to my knowledge, make moonshine out of gingerbread. So, we have potatoes, but potatoes are so blocky in their normal state that they are unable to be imbued with yeast, which here will be a metaphor for soul. So, the first step in the process is to prepare these crude potatoes, or crude matter, for proper fermentation. The potatoes are sliced, then boiled, and then mashed. 
This resulting potato mash has potential spirits trapped in it. Spirits that themselves fuel this alembic of time. But this spirit is only eventually made manifest well after the potato mash is fermented. And even so, some parts of the potato mash have more spirit potential than others, depending on its innate starch concentration to begin with. So water is added to the mixture, along with sugar, which is a metaphor for desires, malted barley, which is a metaphor for discipline, and, of course, with the absolutely essential yeast, which is a metaphor for soul. And matter sits there in absorption for a while. Yeast soul can now interact with the potato body in this state, having been properly prepared beforehand. During this time, as the yeast soul uses sugar desire and malted barley discipline to imbue more and more into the potato bodies to make it fermented, which here is a metaphor for spiritual realization, a certain balance should be achieved between the more spirit manifestation potential that the sugar desire adds and the breaking down of them by the interaction with the malted barley discipline. This balance is so that the potential to manifest and release the spirit trapped initially in the potato's previous state is unlocked. Yet, the process is far from completed, as this is merely one of the phases. Next comes filtering. Now, the filter is a metaphor for choice. And I consider that choice to be always a moral one. Powered between sugar desire and malted barley discipline, as they bring forth the spirit potential from the potato starch body, does one's yeast soul identify more with the discarded potato leftovers, as the filter passes and is applied, or with the extracted mash liquid? Moral choice, hmm? One of plenty. Then, the liquid is left to ferment, or, metaphorically, contemplate and realize, completely. Note that for proper results, its pH also has to be more or less balanced in the middle range, neutral, not leaning too much towards acidic, which here is a metaphor for false evil, nor towards alkaline, here a metaphor for false good. Be your fermented liquid, which is spiritual realization, too acidic or evil within the realm, or too alkaline or good within the realm, and it will not manifest the potential spirit in its source. Therefore, the proper fermentation realization is achieved when, within certain balanced parameters between the Alembic's devices, sugar, de sugar desire, and malted barley discipline contents, and within a certain neutral pH range between acidic evil and alkaline good in the device. The overall status of the fermentation realization level is checked with tests done with a drop of iodine, here a metaphor for a challenge or issue. If the iodine challenge reacts with sugar desire still left unbalanced by the malted barley discipline, then it needs more yeast soul work time. All of us potatoes thus get our challenges from time to time, don't we? Now comes the heating phase, the actual distilling of the pre-fermented or pre-realized liquid. One would be tempted to think that the first spirit to be dripped back into the source would be the most pure. Nah, -huh. the first is actually the worst, most toxic alcohol. In actual distilling, these first essences would be properly set aside and completely discarded. Yet, the Alembic device is a all-in-one world machine, so it will simply reabsorb, metaphor for reincarnation, such toxicity and wickedness back into its container for later reprocessing. The same happens to the ones that come after, 
alcohols who became too solvent, too degreasing in their disciplined identity, are too stringent too, and so do not match the original source spirit. These are put back into the container as well. It is the third manifesting alcohols that match the source spirits. They emerged not too eagerly, not too late, not too identified with false evil or false good. These are the spirits that make it back across the Alembic's tube, back into the source bottle, so to speak. And then there are the latecomers, those who manifest last due to their sheer strong identification with their potato selves, their bodies and characters and daily potato routines. When they arrive in the Alembic's tube, the way is already shut and the only way is back down into the container for another cycle of the distilling process. So here you go. This is the metaphorical recipe for our moonshine. <laughs> As to what is left in the world, well, the world alembic device will reform the leftovers back into crude potatoes and restart. Note that every time this process is performed, potential spirits and consequently alembic device fuel leaves the container. This means that the alembic's operable world container shrinks due to less power or fuel being available, that is, less spirit stuck still in potato starch matter. So the world shrinks, and given that the time needed to process less world is also less, times for the next cycle shrink too. The next process will take less time in the world alembic device than the previous one did, as the previous one took less time than the one before, and so on. So the cycles of preparation, fermentation, distillation and release of, of trapped spirit within the world alembic will continue, each one smaller in scope than the previous, until such time as there is no more spirit trapped in the world alembic device and... Finally, bereft of any more fuel, the Alembic shuts down and dissolves into nothingness, taking with it all potato leftovers of its own making, where it used to trap spirit. It dissolves because, unlike the source spirit it used to trap to power itself, it is not truth, but used truth trapped within to pretend to make believe that it wasn't false. So here it is, the alembic metaphor I was forced to do by Tess and Boo, in an expanded format. Now, don't go trying this at home though. Instead of trying to make any spirit of your own, just instead allow your potato to be imbued with yeast properly allowing yourself to be balanced in pH between good and evil, as well as sugar desire and malted barley discipline. After the process is finished, individually, you will find yourself having a drink with your source mates and laughing about those times in the curious world alembic. All without words, of course, but you know that already by now. Don't worry. Unlike alcohol spirits in the world, truth spirits does not impede upon your senses, but, quite contrarily, offer you actual, timeless and true life. <laughs>